What's going on? This is Greg Mike, artist and designer from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here with Jimmy from the Walker School. Uh, Jimmy worked on an incredible piece here at the school. Jimmy, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So when I was making it, obviously my main inspiration was your stuff. It was based off of the, the big frog in the front was like, I took most of it from your design because like, I think all your stuff with like the chipped teeth and stuff is really cool. Nice. So like I took a lot of inspiration from that, but I also like to add a lot of my own elements in there in like a different style. So, I mean, I don't consider myself as an artist with one style. I like to do a lot of different stuff and just throw it all together. That's but good. But yours, it was definitely in inspiration off of yours. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. What do you think the hardest, most challenging part of doing the drawing and then putting it on the wall was? Well, I mean, the way that the wall was shaped with the stairs and stuff, we had to do a lot of measurements. It was, it was tough. I mean, because I, I had to make like three drafts of that copy just to get it to fit on that wall. And it was like, it was, we were in a time crunch, like a big time crunch. So it was, it felt great to get that thing on the wall. Yeah, and it seemed like you had a good team of uh, assistants, your classmates that were helping you, right? Yeah, I mean, they did great. They helped a lot. It yeah. was... And how long did it take? Um... Well, after you left, it probably took around like four days to like patch it up and stuff like that. Just get it looking the way it's supposed to. Nice. And uh, what grade are you in? I'm in fifth grade. Fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And you're going to continue uh, to do art and, and keep pursuing it, mm -hmm. right? I plan to. Yep. Nice. Where else do you find inspiration? Um. Well, usually I just see stuff and then my brain just compiles it all and I just like Sometimes I hardly even realize it, but I'm incorporating like a lot of random styles that I've just picked up over the ages. And I don't really, yeah. I mean, it just, it's a giant mix. That's awesome. Yeah, si similar with me. It's like, I feel like you're always just kind of seeing things and your mind's recording it. And then when you go to mm -hmm. create, just kind of all kind of meshes together mm -hmm. and comes out, yeah. right? Nice. What got you drawing in the first place? Um, I started drawing, I think, similar to what you said, you know, just kind of, I was doodling in notebooks at, at school or um, when I was at home at night and uh, I was watching a lot of cartoons and uh, reading comics and uh, looking at skateboard graphics and all that stuff kind of just melted together and then that's kind of where my style was born but yeah I mean it was just something that started as a simple drawing and then it just kept expanding and evolving and over time um, you know kind of defined my own style and um, yeah I've been doing it for you know, probably 30 years now. What made you uh, start wanting to do murals? So I'm like... Um, I think I was, when I was probably like 12 or 13 years old, I was driving from, I used to live in Connecticut and I was driving into New York City on the train. I was seeing all this street art and graffiti on, on the walls. And um, it really just intrigued me on like, you know, how these artists were painting this. And, um, and that kind of sparked my interest in it. And like anything, I just, you know, I started with like a small wall and, uh, built the confidence after I painted one to kind of go bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think that's always been, you know, something with my career is like trying to always kind of elevate it and take it to the next level and paint bigger walls. So, you know, now it's, you know, giant 50, 60 foot walls on huge scissor lifts and boom lifts and things like that. And I think there's a little bit of a rush to it that comes with it, you know, just mm -hmm. like, you know, doing an extreme sport or skateboarding or something, that so feeling. Like, feeling so accomplished, yeah. that, like you see one big thing and it just makes you feel good. Exactly. I mean, it's the same thing, I'm sure, like when you did your sketch and then once you saw it painted on a giant wall, mm -hmm. you probably have the urge to do more, right? Yeah. It's like, and, you, and, you, and once you do it once, you realize it's probably a lot easier, you know, to do it once you've accomplished it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of that fear, I feel like, in the beginning, but um, once you once you knock it out of the park, then you kind of get more confidence and you're able to do bigger, crazier things. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, how did you decide that signature, like, chip tooth design thing? Yeah, so I was drawing, like, all these characters and um, on, on these soda cans, I was painting these soda, soda cans and, um, I went to make like a sticker because I had to, uh, I wanted to start making stickers and handing them out to friends and putting them up around town. And I was put, I took one of the can designs and on the template for the, the sticker, it was a square template. So it was, I kind of had to like move it around. So first I had the eyes in there and it didn't really work because it was like the eyes with the nose was cut off. And then I shifted it down and uh, the mouth actually like kind of fit perfect in the square of the template of the sticker. And like it kind of just, 
happened just by you know a little bit of luck that it fit perfect and then i and then i adjusted it um to that you know to fit you know create a square with four exact you know four teeth top uh four up top four on the bottom eight total teeth and then i made stickers and started handing them out and it kind of just became like the iconic thing mm -hmm. so I don't think it was one of those things where I was ever looking at it like I need to make this icon. What's my icon going to be? It kind of just happened naturally. And I feel like with my career in general, it's been that way where it's like I kind of just, you know, if you do what you love and you work hard and you focus on it, like all those things are going to come together over time. You know, a lot of people stress out about like, oh, I need to develop my icon. I need my icon. I need my brand. I need my logo. But I think if you just continue to do what you're doing, it's going to, you know, it's going to come together naturally. Yeah. What is the craziest thing you've ever painted for you? The craziest thing. Hmm. I painted a probably there's a six story building in Atlanta and I painted a giant bird that had some of my characters um, in it. It was a falcon and then there were some of my characters that were entwined, intertwined in it. But uh, the way that I had to access it was there was a building here and I had to do a boom lift that went over and extended out. And this is six stories up in the building and then turn it and paint, paint the building this way. So the whole time I was nervous, I was gonna smash the building next door with the boom lift. And I really only had about like maybe eight feet to kind of thread that needle to, to hit the wall and make sure that I was able to paint it. Um, yeah, so there was the fear of the heights there there was the scale and then also the fear of damaging or running this giant lift into another building. Mm -hmm. That sounds... Um, but yeah, it was... And, and it was an interesting texture on the wall with some flat. It kind of had some panels on it and some ridges uh, from the paneling on the building. So that one was definitely scary and I was glad once it was finished to, to be done with it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's about all my questions. Awesome. Appreciate it. Nice work. Continue to keep up the great work. Thanks for coming. Yeah.